Um, welcome to Middlesex University. Um, I'm Bev Spate and I'm the programme leader for the 3D Design and the Visual Arts Foundation programmes. Um, and I'd like to introduce my colleague, um, Ashna Barmer, and she's a, a, a GAA and works on the foundation uh, programme as well with me. Um, we've got Ashna around today and I think it's, we're lucky to have her because she can cover lots of different questions that you might have um, because of her journey, because she started off as a, a foundation student at Middlesex years ago uh, and then also did the BA uh, interior design and is now teaching on the foundation course. So I think you've, if you've got any questions for her at the end, that would be really useful. So she could probably cover all aspects, which I think would be really good. Hi everyone, welcome. <laughs> Right, okay. Well, what we're going to do today is we want to, to, first of all, just briefly talk to you about all the different art and design programmes that we've got available, the BA programmes that we've got available at Middlesex. Just give you a quick outline of that and then talk to you a little bit about foundation. Um, and then we're going to look at a video of um, the exhibition of work because I think that might be really interesting because that will give you a flavour of all the sort of things that we do on foundation and hopefully get you excited about it. And then we're going to uh, look at how to put a portfolio together, what to put in a portfolio, what to include, um, and just go through that generally so that you know what you need to put in for application. And then at the end of all that, we're going to have a, a Q&A session. So I think as Rudy was saying earlier, that if there's any questions that you have, if you want to put them in the chat, we can, um, we're going to address those at the end. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm just going to share my screen. So we'll get started. Um, I'll share my screen with you. I've got some visual here, uh, which will help us explain. Um, so hopefully you can all see that. Just put it to full screen. Okay. Can you see that, Ash? Yeah, that's all come up great. Okay, that's great. So if we start by, I was just going to talk about the different art and design programmes that we've got on offer at Middlesex University. Sometimes people don't know the, the the sort of expanse of what we have got on offer, which is pretty um, pretty diverse. And I'll go, we'll go through that now. So we've got three main uh, areas, wind the art and design umbrella. We've got visual arts, we've got 3D design, and we've got BA fashion. Okay. So first of all, the visual arts, what's included under that is we've got BA animation. We offer BA 3D animation and gaming. 3D photography, uh, BA graphic design, illustration, fine art, and then under 3D design, we have interior design, interior architecture, and then under fashion, we cover, we have a fashion uh, BA, fashion design BA, and we have fashion textiles, and we have uh, what we call FCS, which is fashion communication and styling. So all these programmes are the BA programmes, which are three years, it's a three year degree. Now, in addition to this, uh, Middlesex, we try to cover all options. So we also offer a four year programme, which includes a foundation year. So um, that covers lots of different entry points. You might wonder, you know, what do we do? Do I apply direct and what's the difference between, between direct entry and foundation. Um, well, there's a few differences really. Foundation is a misconception. It's not a case of not being good enough to go into, um, into BA, into the, straight into the BA. It's probably because you're not quite ready. And this can be for many different reasons. Um, it could be something, for example, it might be that you've got an excellent potential in your work and your portfolio, but you know, you do, your work might not be diverse enough. You might just have painting in there and we want you to open up and try lots of different things and show different ways of working. Or it might be that you might lack in a few skills. You might not have done much photography or may not have done much printmaking that you want to do and you want to add that to your portfolio. Um, it might be that the creative process, you might not be sure about how to work through a project. This is all that we teach you on foundation. Or it might be just, just to build confidence and maturity so that when you go into your first year of EBA, you know exactly, um, you know, you're in a confident position and you know exactly what you're doing. Um, and I think also the direction, the main thing is a lot of people come in and a lot of students put down as their direction fine art because it's quite a general term and they're not really sure of what else is available under art and design or what other careers they could go into. So the 
foundation year is a really useful year because it does help you make your mind up which direction you want to go in and it introduces you to lots of different areas other than just sort of general art and design I think Ash did you find that quite interesting or quite useful doing the foundation year yeah I did I mean for me I kind of wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do when I was at, at kind of in sixth form and um you know my parents wanted me to do something based in the sciences and so I took the science subjects but I always had this real love for art and for design and uh even for fashion and you know I kind of I, I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do but I felt like I needed to do something that was creative and I had a kind of inkling that maybe I was interested in something to do with interiors but I think coming and doing a foundation made that really clear for me and it gave me the opportunity to really try lots of different things I think that's a brilliant thing about foundation is that you get to try printmaking and you get to try um, graphics projects and you get to do kind of sketchbook projects and you do so many different things that really start to build up your um, your kind of creative eyes in a way you go out on trips you know we went out on trips to galleries and um, we had kind of contextual studies and I think it really opens your eyes to the art world and the design world as a whole that you then start to realize yourself where your interests are and maybe some of the things that you might not like. And I think that can really help you to decide where you want to go and where your strengths lie as well, yeah. um, and where your interests are. So mm -hmm. I think yeah, I know, I agree. I think it's, I mean, I did a foundation year, obviously years ago, but I found it very useful. It's usually, usually the way that, that it works. And even people that come in on direct entry have usually done a foundation course of some, of some sorts at college or um, at locally, and then, and then come in and, and come in that way. But in this way, we said we kind of we we put it all in one package, which is great. Which means that when you come and apply for BA found BA, for example, uh, illustration with foundation year, you are then guaranteed a place on the illustration for the four years. So you've kind of sorted all your four years out. Then you know you don't have to reapply or anything like that. Um, and I think that kind of takes the pressure out of, of everything. Obviously, you've got to pass every year, but, um, but you know, it kind of sorts your four years out and takes that pressure out in some way. OK, so that's kind of a sort of a starting about foundation. So I think we'll probably just go on and give you a little bit more detail about that. So looking at the foundation programme as a whole, um, as we said, it's kind of... Um, it forms the essential part of your learning process. It shows you how to, well, on the foundation, we teach you how to attack a project, how to start a project and take it through right from beginning and then ideas, bring research in there, experiment and explore, not go with the first idea that comes into your head and then run through to a final outcome. You know, it's an it's exciting year, as Ash was saying, it's, it's a flexible year and it's designed to encourage students to explore their creativity you know, develop skills, because you will, you know, you go into all the workshops that we have and, and experiment um, in, in things probably that you've never worked in before and, and experience the breadth of the different specialisms that you can go into. So not just fine art, you know, you could actually, you may have, a, you may discover a love of animation or illustration or graphics along the way. Um, and that was really does help. So it, it helps you focus on your direction um, of your BA journey. So then you're going to make the best and make the most out of your next three years. So the best way of doing it, rather than, uh, we thought it might be good to go through probably the top 10 highlights of the foundation year, and that will give you an idea of what it's all about. So first of all, number one, um, as we said, it's, an ex it's an opportunity to expand your creativity and to broaden your technical skills and build confidence in preparation for BA. We always look at it as, you know, you come in with a sort of a, um, a a palette this big and you end up with a palette of working this big so it really just opens you up and gives you more more to work with and opens up your creativity um number two really that's you get intensive teaching because it's five days a week you get you know experienced tutors that have, and technicians that we all work in industry and work in um in in, in education so what we're teaching is what's current you know we're, we're sort of we're in this industry as it is at the moment so whatever we teach is out there at the moment and it's, it's up to date so I think that's an important thing I think that's really 
um, one of the selling points of our particular course. Um, number three, we talked about before, which is flexibility. And this is, I think this is really important. We said that it's about discovering and making sure that you know this is the direction you want to go in. We get a lot of students that come in and they say, I want to do interiors, I want to be an interior designer, and they stick with that all the way through. And that is absolutely fine. But we get a lot of students that come in and say, I want to do art and design, but I'm not really sure which area I want to go in for. And they might come in, for example, on BA illustration with foundation year, but then find a love of animation while or through that year. And that then you can actually change direction. So you start your BA, in animation rather than illustration. It's a kind of a, a year of discovery, if you like, and it's, it's good that you've got that flexibility to do so. Um, we've got some fantastic workshops here at Middlesex. I think they are probably the best in the UK. We've got some expert teaching staff um, that will help and support you through all your projects. And those are the, all the workshops are open to all the foundation year, which is great. Um, I think it's important to say that we've got a fantastic studio base. So we've got a, a, a studio dedicated purely to foundation and each student has got their own desk space. You've got your own desk, your drawers, your pin board, everything, and that's yours for the whole year. And I think that's quite unique these days when space is so uh, is such a premium because it means that you're not hot desking, you're not a desk, uh, one desk in the morning and then the next day someone else is there. You've got that space and that desk for the whole year. And I think that makes quite a difference as an artist or a designer. And it might be that when you're in the studio, um, say if I was a graphic designer, I might be next to an illustrator and I might be next to an interior designer. And we try and mix it all up because I think that works really well. It's really healthy and it works well with the project because it, you can also see and share how other um, disciplines work and how they attack projects, which is really interesting. Um, I think Ash mentioned Creative London. Do you want to talk a bit about Creative London, Ash? And what yeah. we have there? Yeah, Creative London is um, one of the most exciting things I think about Foundation. It's a, a module that's dedicated to introducing students to museums and galleries and exhibitions and different artists and artworks. Um, and it's one of the things that I definitely enjoyed a lot um, on Foundation is, is, as I mentioned earlier, going out and, and seeing all the different galleries in London and learning about the artworks and, and reflecting on that. Um, and so Creative London is a module where we ask you to create um, a visual diary of all of your experiences and your kind of thoughts and feelings and reflections on um, the exhibitions that you visited throughout the year. Uh, and it's something that we you know, we, we try to take um, the students out to a gallery visit every week, uh, which is amazing because it's it's quite a long program. And if you think about the number of galleries that I think we usually frequent, it's <laughs> it's quite a lot. But I think it's fantastic. You know, I've lived in London my whole life and there were galleries that I hadn't even heard of that we ended up going to. So I think it, it's it's such a brilliant thing yeah. um, to go and, and really experience it and to keep up to date with what's happening currently in the art world you know you learn about the history of art there's certain galleries obviously that you know um that show kind of quite historic art but you also go to visit um really contemporary exhibitions and we go to see um even like live installations and interiors installations and so i think there's something really exciting about seeing lots of different things that you know cater to different people um, and again, as I said earlier, I think that really helps you to understand what you like and what you don't like and where your own interests might be. Um, and so I think it's a really exciting thing, actually. It is. It's a good one. And that's every, and we, we, we go on the Creative London days, it's, it's every Tuesday. So every Tuesday we go out there with the team, which is really exciting. We don't usually meet in campus, we meet off campus and, you know, probably meet at a gallery or something like that. But it's, yeah, as Ash says, it's really exciting part of the program that we offer yeah you have a whole day out outside of the studio with your kind of friends and you know your, all of your students and it's nice to have that week broken up I think as well so you're not in the studio every day you're doing kind of different things throughout the week so I think that's really important yeah I'm talking about doing different things throughout the week every Monday is uh, life drawing I mean, we believe here at Middlesex that drawing underpins everything that you do. So whether you're doing interiors or you're doing 
photography or you're doing um, illustration, drawing is a really good skill to have. And it's, we get a lot of students come in and say, oh, I can't draw. Well, we say it's a bit like exercise. The more you do, the better you get. And we have drawing, live drawing classes every Monday um, with two tutors. We have Jim and Aldous that work, uh, work with the students and they cover a massive range of really exciting projects and, um, and, and different approaches to live drawing. So that's another thing that's every week. So Bash was saying we've got the um, Creative London on a Tuesday and every Monday we have drawing. Um, Industry Week, this is something uh, that um, we find works incredibly well with students and also helps them um, to make their mind up um, that they're in the right direction, the right specialism. So what we do is we dedicate a week of industry input where we get um, key speakers from industry, we get artists and designers to come in and they either open their doors and we'll have a look at what they do in their studios or they'll come in and give talks and show their work give advice and also just talk about their careers about their journey from the beginning to end which is really exciting um, and I think that's and they cover we usually try and well, we we do we get somebody from every different specialism in and that's really good as well because that and that kind of fits in midway of the program so it's at a time when you're trying to make your mind at which way you want to go or you want to confirm that the way that you want you've chosen is the right way to go so that's an interesting and a very exciting week that we have I think that falls just before Christmas as well so it's a nice sort of end point to the first semester so number nine um continuing support and feedback this is more of one of the practicalities but it's a really important thing it means that what we do is we Obviously, it's, it's an intense programme, as I said earlier, so it's five days a week. So we, you, you've always got tutors there, which, again, is something that I think a lot of other foundation courses don't offer. But we offer we offer tuition five days a week and um, we give formative feedback after every project. And also you're getting feedback throughout the week, obviously. And then you get assessment at the end of every programme, at the end of every module and at the end. So. Um, that is pretty continuous, which is good. So at least you know where you are and you can improve as you go along. And number 10, um, by the end of it, um, you've got this opportunity to build a fantastic, um, creative and diverse portfolio. So, and we go, so all the work that you've done throughout the year, we ask you to select, um, which is quite an art in itself, to select the best of, if you like, and put that together in a portfolio format. Um, to show you up to your best, more like a sort of a show reel of your own. And also we have a final exhibition at the end. Usually it's a physical one, um, but obviously this last year it's been online, but hopefully it'll be physical um, from now onwards and that will be great. Um, and so it's about how to, ex you learn then how to exhibit your work, how to display it um, and how to prepare everything for exhibition. So those are kind of the top 10 things that make up the highlights of the programme. It's, a, I mean, I think it's a fun year and as well as being extremely helpful and useful within your process um, of your design process and your design uh, pathway. Um, I think the best thing to do now, we're gonna take a look at the exhibition. I'm gonna share this with you. It's about four or five minutes long and it's, um, but it's just what it is, it's this year's exhibition. So it's going to go run through everything from interior design to uh, photography and it'll just show you it'll give you a flavor of the sort of thing that we um that we teach and the sort of thing that the, the students are producing so if you just bear with me a second i'll just open this up hopefully you'll be able to see this in a second share this with you okay just make the screen a little bit bigger. Right, we're ready.
show you the breadth of work that we you know that we produce that the students produce not we produce but the students produce on foundation and um, hopefully get you excited about um, the work uh, that we do here I just want before we move on to the um, portfolio I just wanted to just say that you know I don't want you to worry about whether you come in you know what do I do do I do direct entry or do I go through on foundation um, if you applied for one or the other um, we work really closely with the BA tutors so if we had someone that came in wanted to do foundation, we thought, of course, they're really ready to go straight into illustration, for example, then we would then recommend them and get them to talk to the BA tutors and vice versa. If, if they get someone that's come in for a direct entry, for example, again, um, in it, it BA illustration, and they felt that that student wasn't quite right, would really benefit from a year's foundation, they would then direct them back to us. So we do aim to get between us, we cover every sort of um, option so that we can then make sure that whatever you apply for, you're in exactly the right place and at exactly the right level. Okay. Um, now moving on to the, um, the portfolio, I'm just gonna share again. So I'm doing a lot of sharing this afternoon. I'm gonna share again my screen. Um, let me just get rid of that one and share the... Uh, portfolio presentation okay here we go let's make it full screen right um hopefully this will help so if you're going to apply for ba this will give you um a good idea of what to put into your portfolio for the BA foundation so generally all the programs that we've mentioned before, all the ones at Middlesex University, these are all the programmes that require a portfolio. So basically it's everything that's art and design. We don't want to see a portfolio. We want to see what you're about, what you can do. And it's a really important part of the application process. Um, there are two ways in which you can put a portfolio together. There's also there's the physical portfolio and the digital portfolio. Now, 
normally we like to see people we like to sort of meet them face to face and which is either your normal way of working so you would then actually have we would see your physical portfolio that you'd bring in obviously um a lot of that can't always be the case and we sometimes we have to um interview digitally especially this year where it's been online um so it's best to create a physical portfolio and then photograph it and then save it in something like a pdf of a pdf or google slides or powerpoint or a web, or even a web link um so you've got the format in two in you've got the two, two formats if it's going to be a physical portfolio um we don't mind a lot of, a lot of universities are quite strict on the sizes that they use or quite specific about what they what size portfolio to, to bring in we don't mind, you know, choose an A2, an A1 or an A3, whichever suits your work the best. You know, if, you, if you're a fine artist and you've got lots of big pieces of work, go for the larger format. Um, just, you know, whatever suits, I think basically it's whatever suits your artwork. Now, what to include in your portfolio. Now we would recommend, don't put everything that you've ever done in there. We would recommend 15 to 20 of your most successful pieces of work. Because at the end of the day, you want to show off the best, you to your best ability, everything that you've done. You want everything that you put in there, you want to be proud of and confident with. Um, we put on here, include education and personal work. And what I mean by that is uh, school work, things that you've done at A-level or things that you've done at G, even some bits of GCSE that you're really proud of. But also, I think it's, it's, it's good to see personal work. Uh, things that you've done out of school, things that you've, you know, you've put together yourself, maybe sketchbooks or drawings or things like that. Just a selection that showcases you in particular. Originals are great, obviously, to include in the physical portfolios. But obviously, they have to be photographed if you're going to include them digitally. And it's, and it's also interesting for us to see you know, visual experimentation as well as finished pieces. So it might be that you've done a few sketches or a few prelim pieces that build up to your final piece and that's always really interesting for us to see because we can see how you think and see how you work but basically you need to sort of show off as many of your skills as possible so any processes so if you've done any printmaking you've worked with clay or you've worked with photography anything like that as well as your drawing and things like that include those in there because that's always interesting for us to see now I've put down a showcase a variety of work. There's some examples here. We've got drawing, painting, prints, 3D pieces, ceramics, photography, collage, mixed media, storyboards, etc. Obviously, you don't need to include the whole lot of those, but that gives you an idea of things that you can include. And it might be that if you've got um, a particular interest, you know, that for example, if you're really loving animation or you're really interested in that sort of thing or develop or game in development you might put a few little storyboards in or some characters in there and finally sketchbooks sketchbooks are a great way to demonstrate your drawing skills and show us how you think and how you work and you visualize your thoughts um, so they're always brilliant to include i'm going to we'll talk about that a little bit later on so basically that's the content that we'd like to see so here are some more examples, some visual examples of what we of, of what we what we would expect to see. So if you're going to do if you're going to include drawings, you know, don't just draw, don't just include pencil drawings. It'd be nice to see you working in charcoal or maybe some pastels or that type of thing and different styles of drawings. So get that, you know, get a bit of a variety going in there would be great. If it's going to be painting that you're going to include, if it's large format canvases, then you can always photograph them up. If it's something smaller. You can maybe include a small shot of that, which would be great, or an original. Print work, if you've got any print work, if you've done any lino or screen printing, that would be fantastic to include as well. We'd like to see that. Um, both maybe the plates that you've cut and the and the printed work would be interesting. If you, you know, if you're interested in typography or you're sort of veering towards graphic design side of things, it would be nice to see. You know, use of bits of type. It doesn't have to have anything too in depth, but it'd be nice to see how you work with typography. And then that brings me on to collage, which is a fantastic medium that tells us a lot about you. It talks about, it shows us about your composition and all sorts of the way that you work with colour or black and white and shapes and contrasts. So collage is always a lovely one to introduce, whether you're, you know, you're, you're applying for interiors or applying for um, even photography, because that's, you know, it's working with other imagery as well. 
ceramics, if you've got any ceramic pieces or 3D, 3D pieces that you've made, you can photograph these. Notice they're on a nice sort of neutral background, keeping it really clean so that everything is focused on your work. We don't want to see bits of carpet or we don't want to see bits of keyboards in there. You know, really sort of photograph your work and crop it nicely so it really shows it off to your best. Uh, there's a couple of examples here of 3D work. You know, this one on the left just popped a little light in there, which makes it look a little bit more interesting. The one on the right was just a sort of some sort of idea for a game or a level that you know is put together, just made up of cardboard, but nicely photographed at a nice angle. Um, 3D, I think interiors, yeah. Again, Ash, what did you think about this? I mean, these are things that we need to include. What would you include in a in a portfolio? Yeah, I mean, whatever you've kind of done, um, if you've been experimenting with any kinds of different materials or if you've been, you know, if you've come up with some ideas, if you're interested in 3D design um, interiors or interior architecture and you've got ideas of how you might do something differently, if you, you know, you, you've got a room in your house that you might have designed differently or if you have an idea of a piece of furniture that you've come up with or something like that, um, there's so many different things that you could do with that. I think we really like to see things that are kind of um, three dimensional experimentations if it's kind of model making using paper or card or um, anything that you've got at home, you know, models don't have to just be made of paper or cards, they could be made of anything. Um, but any kind of spatial exploration, um, and you can see uh, a little person in there, which I think is always great. So we can, you know, if we are looking through your work, we can get a sense of what kind of um, scale or proportions that you're you're thinking in. I think that's really good. Um, and it doesn't have to be kind of, you know, a really resolved or a really finished idea. Sometimes it's just about um, getting some kind of insight into what your thinking is. And I think model making is a really good way of doing that. So. Um, yeah we're always excited to see three-dimensional things but equally sketches you know if you've got some ideas and you might show it in 3d but you also might do a few sketches from different viewpoints so that we can get some understanding so obviously um interiors is is a three-dimensional thing and so to show it in one way might not be very clear for us to understand um because don't forget you know if you're sending your portfolio off sometimes you may not immediately have the opportunity to talk through your work you know the tutors might look through your work first and then you might have the opportunity later um so i think it's good to show things in lots of different ways or you can then point out you know this is what i did here and this is how i was showing it and in this visual here this is what i was trying to um show you so um yeah sketches models experimentation with different materials and different mediums i think that's really really key yeah i think that's great i think that I think that's absolutely right what Ashley's saying about you know the physical thing actually making what we do see is just a lot of digital work you know a lot of these programs that you can get a lot of apps that you can use where they'll you know you can design a room some of those are quite nice to see but we don't want to see just all of that we need to see a lot of the physical work as well and your ideas and your sketches um would be is really interesting as well you know if you if you've got sort of a an idea of story of, of, of a story or something that you want to illustrate uh, for animation it'd be nice to see maybe just a little sort of um stop motion uh, illust uh animation or maybe cre uh, create characters any ca characters that you've created that would be lovely to see whether they're three-dimensional they might be made of clay or something like that or just sketches would be great um and photography um obviously if you're a photography student it's or wanting to major in photography then that's great we want to see lots of that but nice to see even you know for Graphic designers, it's really lovely to see photography throughout all the disciplines because it tells us such a lot. It tells us about your eye for things, your, what you're looking at and your composition, uh, which is really great. There's a couple of black and white ones here. And then, you know, we've got some darkroom stuff here. If you've got access to darkroom, that would be great as well. Just see, let's see what you're experimenting with and what you're looking at. That's really important. I think um, the key thing, oh, sorry, Beth. No, go back. I, was gonna say, I think the key thing with, um, putting together a portfolio is to show what you're interested in. And I think, you know, photography is a great way of doing that sometimes, because as Bev said, you know, you might be interested in graphic design or you might be interested in even interiors or architecture. And, um, you know, it, whether you do that through three-dimensional model making or through sketching or through photographing buildings that you've seen and you've really liked, or, you know, 
anything that you've seen that's kind of caught your eye and has given you some interest. Um, however you decide to show your kind of passion, your interest, I think that's a really um, key thing to put in. Um, but obviously, if it is something that you photograph, maybe just put a note and say, you know, what it is that you've seen or, for instance, so that we we know that, you know, you've taken the photos yourself and we can see where you photographed it, for instance. Um, That's it. And also, it doesn't have to be, you know, um, you know, you don't have to have any fancy cameras or anything like that. I think a lot of our phone cameras these days are absolutely fantastic. So you could, you know, if it's something that you want to capture, you could always use that. Um, moving on to sketchbooks as well, I think we talked about this and when the content uh, or what to include. Just to recap, you know, they're a great way of demonstrating your skills, your drawing skills, you know, what you want to, what you're thinking and what you're visualising, your thoughts and, you know, development, experimentation and exploration. And these are some examples of sketchbooks. They can be any format you want. You know, these might be things that you've done at school and you know, that encourage you to use sketchbooks at school or if not, I would recommend that you, this is one of your personal projects, get yourself a sketchbook, go out into the park and start sketching. You know, set yourself a minute or 10 minutes or five minute sketches and see what you come up with. Um, and then, you know, it's a good place to put sort of all your ideas down then, any sketches or ideas of characters or anything like that. And they can be any format you like. And if you, you know, if you can physically bring them in, if it's a face-to-face -face interview, bring them in with you, but if not, photograph some of the pages and include them in your digital portfolio. Here's some examples here. So different drawing skills, different drawing techniques, um, you know, details, experimentation with different sorts of uh, materials, things like this charcoal there, um, this sort of a, a collage on the left, uh, lots of different ways of working. Um, and, and we're talking about just going back to presentation tips. We mentioned a few on the way. But, you know, always present your work neatly against a white background and then it shows your work off to its best. It's not you haven't got anything distracting and you know exactly what you're looking at. Don't overcrowd your pages. Uh, give plenty of space um, to what you're actually showing. And maybe, you know, just do one project a page because that will give it a lot of breathing space and a lot more emphasis. Um, as I said before, you could bring your sketchbooks or you can scan them, scan a few pages from them. Any large 2D work can be photographed. So if you've got large canvases and things like that, they can be photographed, scanned and reduced down to fit your portfolio. Or if you've got any 3D artworks, you know, you can put those against, do you remember the ceramics we showed? You put them against a neutral background and then photograph them. Again, when I say photograph, they can just done with your phone because, you know, you can get some really fantastic results with these now and that gives you the facility to crop them as well so you can crop out any any background and look think about the lighting as well that you've got there you know the natural light that you've got available or little table lamps you can play around with that that's all good practice as well as putting together a good portfolio um, and avoid too much text you know no annotation but maybe just some small captions are really useful so Think about, I always think, think about you're in, you're in a gallery, you know, when you see a gallery and you see a title of a, of a painting and then underneath it usually tells you what, what material it's been done in or what the materials have been used and maybe a size as well. If it's something really big, then you can think, oh, wow, that's a huge size or, you know, it's tiny. But that's all that information is really interesting and it also shows your work off really well. Um, so just to recap now, a uh, quick checklist. As we said before, 30, 15 to 20 pieces of your most successful work, a combination of educational stuff and personal work would be really interesting to see. Originals where possible. Sketchbooks, of course, because they're great to include. And if you haven't done any, maybe you should start doing one, which I think would be really good. Um, show visual experimentation. So maybe the build up to the final piece, because sometimes the, the, the build ups might be more interesting than the end product. It does happen on occasions. Um, and then show your skills off as many different processes as that you've used and that you've shared, that you've demonstrated, that you can demonstrate would be great. A variety of work, as I said, I mentioned all, the, all that on the list there, but um, you don't have to include everything, but a nice variety would be good. You don't have to just show, so if, say if I'm going in photography, I don't want to just show photography, it'd be nice to see other things as well. If you're going in for interiors, it, as well as seeing three-dimensional stuff, it would be nice already or, as well to see bits of photography it all tells us a little bit about you and um, last of all you know 
your presentation, you know, you, maybe you, you put your digital portfolio together. Google Slides is a good option. We found this working this year and it's free, you know, if you've got a Google account and it gives, it's quite flexible because you can actually embed video in there as well. So if that's something that you're interested in or something that you've got, that might be worth experimenting if you're a digital um, format. Okay, so the long and the short really, if, you, if your portfolio should be full of work that you're proud of, and if it isn't, then do some more. That's what we would say, and, and get that filled up with, with work. Final slide here, just really little additions. If you, we talked about, again, applying direct or applying to direct to BA or whether you're applying via foundation to a foundation year. If you are going to apply direct, we, you know, they would expect to see a little bit more um, uh, of specialisms, uh, of the ability to specialise in the different areas. So for example, if you're wanting to apply for fine art, it would be really nice to see drawings and photographs and sculpture, as well as life drawings, which would be great. If it's graphic design that you're interested in and you really want to go in for that, you know, you may well have done a BTEC or you might well have done uh, specialised earlier on in college or something. So you might have work in there, but maybe create your own, you know, book covers, set yourself posters to do or magazine covers um, or look at typography and layouts. That would be interesting to include. Um, on the illustration front, you know, look at book covers that are out there and look how you can design them better or illustrate articles from magazines and newspapers. Or you might want to create a graphic novel or a comic, something like that. That would be good. These are all ideas for personal work. Um, animation, uh, please don't include all anime. That's what we see all the time. We like to see something other than anime um, style drawing. We'd like to see storyboards that capture your, your storytelling and also maybe puts together some samples of uh, animations drawn or digital would be really good. Little samples would be great. Uh, if you're interested in photography, if that's your thing, then, you know, maybe you set yourself some projects and create portraits around a theme. You've got access to that, all the people that you live with or people that you know, document, you know, your local area or your sporting activity, or, you know, maybe organize a fashion shoot or create a photo story for a Sunday magazine. Just set yourself some projects. If it's fashion, you think we haven't really mentioned fashion up to now, but if fashion is your is your um, is your area and you really want to get into that, maybe you know create your own clothes and do your own you know do lots of design and development work, and then maybe get your friends to model it and photograph that, photograph them wearing it, um, and this together with lookbooks or magazine spreads or maybe write a fashion blog or make a short film, this would be all fantastic to uh, include in your portfolio. And then last but not least, the you know, interior architecture and design. I think Ash has maybe covered most of this, but anything, you know, think 3D and maybe photograph or draw an interior space that interests you or make a 3D model out of, a, uh, of an interior space and photograph it, you know, design and draw interiors um, to a theme or to a purpose but not just all pure digital apps. We need, we like to see you actually making, we like to see you physically doing things and sketching and that sort of thing. So hopefully that will help you, um, you know, tailor your project, uh, tailor your portfolio to a specialism if, that, if, you're, if you're aiming for direct entry. Okay, so that kind of uh, sums up the builder portfolio. So I guess now, we're over to you and we're ready for any Q&A. So over to you, Rudy. Okay, perfect. I think this was very insightful and I believe everyone enjoyed the presentation. And I think we have, um, just a second, please. I think we have a question uh, that you actually, I think you touched on it quite a bit. And it says, can you do a foundation, a foundation year and then pick a BA or do, or do you have to choose first? Do you have to, could you, ask the, could you tell me, the, ask me the question again? Sorry, I didn't quite. Yeah. So um, can you do a foundation year and then pick a BA or do you have to choose first? You can come in um, on foundation. You, what, you, you, what you would do is you would look at the specialisms on offer and you would probably come in, say, on graphic design with foundation year or illustration. The one that sounds the most interesting to you, come in on that and then as we said before, it's a really flexible year. So if you decide to change direction, then you can change direction within that year and then go on to specialize 
and your BA years on that on that particular um, uh, on the, on your on your on your chosen route. So even if you come in on a different one, you can change within this year, uh, or you may come in knowing exactly what you want to do, and then you will sail right through or the whole four years. Okay, thank you. That, does that answer your question? I hope so. Yeah, I think it's. I think you touched on this earlier, Bev. That yeah. we've had students come in who have, you know, have come in and said they want to do fine art, and they've left the year going on to do BA interiors or something completely different. And I think that's absolutely fine. You do have to make a choice in order to apply for the course, but you don't. You know, you're not stuck to that choice. You know, for your entire four years. So within that first year, you have the opportunity to switch if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we will help you to do that if we feel that that's um, suited for you. Yeah, I think I think my advice would probably, if you're not sure, if you know you just want to do something in art and design, but you're not sure what you want to do, maybe come in on fine art with foundation year, and that's more of a general one, and then you can then decide from there. I think that would be the best bet. Okay, thank you so much. And we have another question, say, uh, and it says, can I include mood boards on my portfolio? Absolutely, yeah, that would be interesting. If you photograph those and put those in, that sounds lovely. Yeah, I'd love to see them. Okay. Yeah. And another question. Uh, do the art and design courses offer an opportunity to study abroad? Do they also offer an opportunity for work placement? Thank you. Yeah, well, they do on the BAs, absolutely, on the, uh, across the four years, but not on foundation year. On foundation year, um, it's very much about opening you up creatively and getting you prepared and, and sort of working through projects and that. But when you get into the into your years, on, uh, your second, third and fourth year, within those years, then you do get placements. But every programme is different and they all offer different things. So, um, you know, fine art may offer uh, placements in year two, whereas someone else may offer placements in year three. So for the specific information on that, you'll have to look at that particular program online. On the, if you look on the website, it should tell you what, what year the placements are. But yes, generally over all the four year, over all the, all the BAs, you usually have placement years. Okay. Uh, we also have another interesting question. Um, is a level necessary for foundation year? And does it matter if you have been choosing at for A level? No, not at all. I mean, we get a lot of students that haven't done art at A-level. You have to have A-levels, obviously, to get on the programme. But um, every year we see a lot of students. I think Ash should probably uh, tell you more about this. Do you want to talk about this one? Yeah, I mean, I kind of mentioned it um, a little bit earlier when I was telling you about my experience um, coming on to Foundation. But I studied at A-level um, two sciences and... Uh, product design or something it was something designy like that um and at AS I did another science so I did physics chemistry biology <laughs> um and that was really a big part of the reason why I came on to foundation because I didn't feel like I necessarily had enough of that um practical experience uh in the arts in order to go straight on to a, a BA course um, so absolutely, I think, you know, if you feel like you need more experience or you want to try out more things or you just want to build up your kind of creative um, juices in a way, you know, you want to practice that. We always talk about creativity being a bit like a muscle and the more that you use it, the better you get at it. Um, then I think foundation is, is a fantastic thing to do if you feel like maybe you haven't done the A-levels that really, you know, push you into that. Kind of creative direction so if you don't have an a level in art um that's kind of when we when we do say come and do foundation yeah and i think when you're preparing your portfolio obviously if you haven't done art at a level you may have it done at a gcse but if you if you haven't done it at gcse but you've got passion for it then that's when your own personal work really comes in into play when you're actually do putting your portfolio together. So, you know, set yourself some projects, go out and do some sketching. We need to see, you know, what your drawing skills are like, what your ideas are like and that sort of thing. So that's when you have to really put together a portfolio yourself. You know, go out and take some photographs because all of that put together, we can get an idea and we can see potential in people. Um, and, and, and a lot of the time, you know, a lot of students sometimes don't come um, direct from A-level art. They come 
round the other way, but it doesn't mean to say that they're not going to get there eventually. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I think that's the questions for now, but uh, if you guys have other questions, please do put them on the chat. I think we um we also had something that we wanted to share. Uh, we have a lookbook that we wanted to share with you. Yeah. Uh, so that would be good if if we can somehow share that, Rudy, at some point. Oh, it look okay. Um, is there a way that we could attach a file into? It's because it's in the webinar um um mode. It's not possible to actually share. Like if foul, that's the problem. Okay. That is the problem. okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. No, you can't share like files. You can just like type in like answers and that's it. Okay. okay. Um, well, maybe we could. Um, if yeah. anybody's interested, we've got a we've got a lookbook which is um just highlights all the different things that we've talked about today, really, and uh, lots of work that the students do. It's like a newspaper that we always give out at um, interview. I thought that might be, I think that's, Ash was thinking it'd be really useful to get to share that with you if you want that. But um, if not, you can always email in. Yeah. Uh, I think my uh, b.spate at ac, uh, mdx.ac.uk. Can we give them that email address? Oh yeah, sure. That would be really good if they can put that up there. So it's b dot spade, um, s b e i g h t at m d x dot a c dot u k. And if you would like us to send you one, we can send you one. So can you just like repeat the email address? Yeah, it's b dot spade. So it's s p e i g h t at mdx.ac.uk or you could email Ashna. Yeah, or you could email me. It's a.varma at mdx.ac.uk. Yeah, and we can share that with you. It's just a recap really of that website of everything that we've kind of gone over today and a bit about the courses and um, the, the specialisms that we kind of work with and we can guide students on to. Yeah, it's not text heavy, it's very, it's very, um, well, it's nice to look at, that's why it's a little book. Um, so it's very pictorial, it shows work and stuff like that. So that hopefully it'll be really helpful. Oh yeah, sorry, we have another question. Um, yeah. It says, is it possible to just do the foundation course at Middlesex and not the degree after? No, I mean, we encourage you to do, it's a four year programme. So you're signing up for four years um, so you can you can marry it up with any of the of the BAs, but it's a four year program. We don't, it's not a standalone B. It's not a standalone foundation year. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, apologies if, if this has been answered, but should we attach a small piece of uh, written about each piece uh, in our portfolio? I would I'd keep the. Uh, I think you can annotate it, but what we don't want to see is is lots of text in there because I think the work should speak for itself. So I think you could, if, if you wanted a little explanation of what something is, then maybe keep it keep it quite short and keep it quite um, uh, concise, I think, uh, if it's needed to be. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Um, okay. I would like to say thank you so much for the questions. I also, uh, to the presenters and I think um, we will wrap up shortly because we have just two minutes left uh, from the session uh, but if you have any other questions or you're interested to see what the modules of the course are please remember that you can visit www.mdf.ac.uk and in the university website you can see like each module what they offer and have like a clear idea of what you choose as well. Uh, would you like to also add anything else? No, I think that's fine. I think if anybody would like the lookbook, they can get in touch with us. Uh, we've got all yeah. the details on the website. Um, yeah, and then maybe if you've got any more questions, um, come to one of the open days. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Uh,
so I would say everyone should have a lovely evening. Thanks again for coming today. And uh, remember that you can also get the logbook through the email or perhaps just visit the website. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, wait, I think, wait. Okay, so I say thank you. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye.